Hi, this is Dave Hammer. Time to continue our build on the Cricut Utility Air Hammer. All videos and pamphlets produced by David Hammer are copyright protected. The Cricut videos are available on YouTube for free viewing at this time. I do not give permission for the content to be downloaded nor used for any commercial gain. Metalworking projects require the use of shop equipment. Please exercise caution when using machines. These videos are offered without accepting any liability for your experiences. Your safety is your sole responsibility. This video is part eight of a series that provides information about how the original Cricut Utility Air Hammer was built. This episode covers part two of the air circuit components installation. First, we'll be plumbing the exhaust side of the air circuit off the four-way valve. Iron fittings may be used here. A little closer look at the components that will be installed on the exhaust side. First, install the street elbows, then the hose barbs, in ports 3 and 5 of the four-way valve. Lubricate the hoses. Pre-assemble these parts and then install them with the hoses. The little stretch. Use stainless steel clamps on all the hoses. Put on the butterfly valve with the lever operating down. Use sealant to avoid leaks. Actually, I've used Teflon tape before, but I've, I have found that sealant actually works better. Sometimes I get leaks with the tape. Put on the street elbow for connecting to the muffler. I had drilled a hole and tapped the side for a quarter inch NPT. Face the street elbow back and put a quarter inch barb, hose barb fixture in it. Press the muffler against the street elbow and draw around the end with a sharpie. Use a one half inch NPT nipple to draw a circle in the center of that larger circle. Cut the inner circle out with an oxyacetylene torch large enough for the nipple to slide in and set the muffler aside. Next, we're going to add a bracket and a spring to pull up the butterfly valve handle. This is made with one and a half by two inch by quarter inch plate and a half inch rod, four inches long, plug welded in. We're going to install that bracket using one of the tower bracket bolts. That bracket is bent a little bit toward the cylinder so it avoids any interference between the spring and the hoses. Put a spring on to pull up the butterfly valve handle. Be sure the spring doesn't rub on the hoses. This butterfly valve is connected via linkage to the treadle. When the treadle is fully up, the butterfly valve is closed. As the treadle is pressed down, 
the butterfly valve opens. The treadle position determines the speed the hammer runs. The further the treadle is pressed down, the faster the ram cycles. Next we'll be working on the input side of the air circuit. A second butterfly valve is installed on the front end of the air circuit. The cricket is turned on by opening this valve. This valve remains open while the hammer is in operation, allowing pressurized air to enter and pass through the air circuit. Air moves through that air circuit only when the butterfly valve on the exhaust side is opened. Next, we're going to prepare the input side air circuit components for installation. To avoid rust getting into the air valves, all fixtures on the input side of the air circuit need to be plated or non-ferrous metal, which would be brass or bronze. First, we're going to make two T's by modifying two brass nipples, one to accept a hose barb fitting, the other to accept a quarter inch nipple. Drill a pilot hole in the center of the nipple. Then enlarge the pilot hole to 7 16 for tapping one quarter inch MPT. These T's will be used with the air gate and the venting valve. Clean out any burrs. Blow out debris with pressurized air. You do not want the debris to get into the air valves. Then tap for quarter inch pipe thread. Put on a quarter inch hose barb fitting. We're going to make two T's. One with the hose barb and the other with a quarter inch nipple. Solder in the additions from the inside. They will leak air if you don't. Clean thoroughly with Dawn dishwashing liquid and either Q-tips or some other device to get in there. This is critical to avoid acid migrating into the air valves down the line. Next, install the components on the input side of the air circuit. These are the components we're going to be installing. All of these, except the ball valve, are half-inch MPT fixtures. Check first to ensure that the small nipple will clear the exhaust elbows. If the nipple will not turn in because it hits the street elbows, sand or file the side nipple shorter. If you need to do this, be sure to clear all the debris from inside the fixture. These are the valves and fittings used on the input side of the air circuit. I have found that using sealant is better than Teflon tape because if you have to back a fixture out, a little bit to get it in the right position. Teflon tape will probably leak. You can put together a few parts first if you wish. Connect the check valve to the first nipple. Next, the nipple with the hose barb. Try to get these aligned as they need to be. Next, the street elbow. Water pliers are handy. Okay. 
screw the assembly into the four-way valve. Now to get it all lined up properly. I found when I had to back these up to get them lined up that I ended up with air leaks using Teflon tape. So I give a strong recommendation to using a good sealant. And I'm learning that pre-assembly was not such a great idea. Put in the venting valve. This is used to release air from the cylinder during the shutdown procedure. I need to get a small muffler for that. You can buy them, they go into that elbow I put in there. The input air butterfly valve is next. Then a reducer and the 3 8 inch air hose quick connect. Next, we'll install the quarter inch hoses. Use stainless steel clamps on all hoses. All the quarter inch hoses must be long enough to allow the full movement of the stroke adjustment assembly. They also must be positioned to avoid being struck by the moving ramp dock assembly. Most of the hose barbs screwed into the air gate and roller valves are straight in. The exceptions are on port 2 of each valve where I use a brass street elbow to provide an immediate 90 degree turn. Notice the orientation of the elbow while I install the hoses. Also, the same type of street elbow is used on the side of the elbow the muffler is attached to. First install a quarter inch hose between port 2 on the roller valve and the spool control port on the four-way valve. Next install a hose between port 3 on the roller valve and port one on the air gate with the T going to the muffler. Notice I didn't recommend soldering the street elbow into the street elbow holding the muffler. Um, I didn't feel it was necessary. A little bit of leakage there isn't going to hurt anything and I think it would be difficult uh, soldering brass to cast iron. These hoses provide a path for venting pressurized air in the hose going to the spool control port. Add a hose between port 1 on the roller valve and port 2 on the air gate. This hose carries the pressurized air from the air gate to the roller valve. Finally, add a hose between port 3 on the air gate and the hose barb on the nipple between the check valve and the elbow. This provides the input air for the air gate. Next, we'll finish the muffler installation. Cut the head off of a 5 16 inch bolt 4 inches long. Weld that bolt threads out into a short one half inch iron nipple. Screw that nipple into the elbow behind the muffler. 
use your blacksmith's ingenuity to figure out where that bolt would want to exit the front of the muffler when you slide the muffler onto the nipple. Drill a hole for the bolt to come through. Use a wing nut to clamp the muffler against the elbow. Then fill the muffler with coarse steel wool. An alternate to coarse steel wool might be brass scrubbers that would be bought for a kitchen. Add a bracket to hold the muffler and exhaust side components in place. The air circuit is now complete. Yay! This has been Dave Hammer. Thanks for watching.